of all colors and backgrounds together in the manger to welcome the bouncing baby into the world. Three wise men journeyed from far away. One came from the deep south, and he brought the gift of the Delta Blues. Concealed within his jar of spices were albums by Sun House and Muddy Waters. One came from Chicago, bearing albums by Willie Dixon and Howlin' Wolf to help nurture the growth and development of this young child. Now the last wise man, he instilled upon the deeply rooted influence of his gospel, country, and jazz on the young child. This child was beautiful, exciting, and vibrant. He took in all these influences and all these gifts from the wise men. He was like no other child anywhere in the world, uniquely American in eliciting a level of enjoyment never before seen. They named him Rock and Roll. And nothing, nothing would ever be the same again. He loved all the little children, and he encouraged them to freely express themselves. Whether it was love, or rage, or reflection, he just wanted them to speak out, to be heard, to be creative, and to share what was in their heart. Elvis the Archangel howled like a hound dog when he saw that star of Bethlehem, announcing the birth of his rock and roll child. He led the way for many to find their way to this son of the blues. Although his star showed the way to the end, the shepherds Bill Daly, Brian Wilson, and Bob Dylan all saw it, and they took their own unique roads to arrive at rock. Some were afraid this child would get boring, get stagnant, but he purred and then he roared and he spread his wings and he flew. James Brown promised to keep him funky. Aretha and Ray Charles knew they could give this young man some soul. And Janice and Grace and later Joan made sure that he would play with the girls too. Some very talented and witty mop top lads from England invaded. They made all the girls squeal. And then later this more ragged English crew rolled in. They just couldn't get no satisfaction. Some big haired, broad collared, polyester clad disco nerds dance into a sappy machine made beat over and over, threatening to ruin the party for everybody. But a couple of Johnnies, Rotten and Ramon, and all their punk friends help get Rock back to its simple roots and turn it up and just get angry at everybody. It was then that Rock and Roll knew that he would live forever. You see, he was more than a child, he was an attitude, a way of life, a beacon of hope, and a beacon of light. He's certainly been that to me, and for Mr. Matt Love, too, our founding father. And for anybody who ever felt anything deeply or had something to say, you've been invited to join this baby in Newport High and play. It was his energy that created the jam. His spirit got the coastal kids singing about the rain. Brought the Blue Bears brothers to the stage, celebrating independence and probably flying their own flag each week in front of their peers and bringing us to where we are today. So let's let his spirit live in your heart this holiday season because Merry Christmas, Lunch Jammers. Rock and roll love to you. <laughs>